Initiating startup sequence. Five, five, four, 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 three, three, you are now plugged in. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to episode 185 of the Plug and Play Podcast. I am your host, Zach, and alongside me, as always, is Tim. Welcome, minions. So, guys, uh, before we jump down into what we've been up to, we're going to go over our first week, our first half tasty treat, which is brought to us by New Belgium Brewing Company, and we are drinking the Voodoo Ranger IPA. Got a badass, like, skeleton dude on the front. I yeah, like that. it's pretty cool. He's all voodoo-ish, and he's probably going to, like, make some type of weird, like, We've been cursed now. Bone meal. We've been cursed with, with delicious hops. Probably. So, right, um, me... cheers. Cheers. It's a uh, very light colored for an IPA. Almost looks like a, I don't know, like a Bud- Budweiser, honestly, as far as yeah, the color. It's very true. It's almost got like a caramel yellow it's to it. It's a very, this is what I would almost call like a sessionable, like something I could drink a lot of, like say sitting by a pool maybe. Probably. I mean, maybe you possibly could have. Okay. So. Um, but that'd be jumping into things we possibly were doing. That's sort of a segue there. Yeah, that, that, that's a good segue. So you sat by a pool and drank a lot of these? No, I didn't. Oh, uh, damn. Well, that somebody, sucks. Somebody I know might have. That sucks. We were uh, both on a vacation this week. We were. We literally both just got back. Um, Different parts of the country, though. Like you went about Very as, different parts. About as far away as possible. Yep. I stayed pretty close to home. Yeah, you did. You're lucky. <laughs> Well, I'm sure we'll get into that. You yep. want to go first? No, no, you can go first. Okay. Well, um, my vacation involved a two-hour drive there and back. Damn. We went to the Oregon coast. Um, this is like a yearly thing I'm getting. Like, this is like the like third year in a row we've heard Tim's gone to the Oregon coast. We go to the coast a lot, yeah. Um, it's kind of the same general area, too. Um, Lincoln City is one we go to often. This time we went to Depot Bay, which is like literally 15 minutes from Lincoln City. Okay. Um, But this... We stayed at uh, World Mark Resort, and it's on the side of a cliff by this kind of cool little pirate's cove right next to the actual depot bay. Nice. Um, so it's got some beautiful geography, and the weather was okay. There was like one day of sunshine, one day of like overcast, and one day was like rain. That's uh, pretty typical. What do you do on rain day? Play video games. Nice. And uh, read books. And, Sweet. Yeah. Um, we don't care if it's stormy. We, we have lots of indoor activities. Sweet. Um, oh, you have to in the Northwest. If you look at my complexion, you know that I don't get a lot of sunshine anyway. I didn't get as much as I so wanted So on to. the cliff side, there's a, a basketball court. and uh, yeah, There's some weird fucking shit you sent me with a basketball court. There was, yeah, there was a guy. He looked like a ref, Russian mafia dude. Yeah, just like, just s- like a suit. Staring, yeah. Just standing in the basketball court. He was court. saying I should play basketball. I'm like, nah, I'm, not, I'm good. I'm not going there. Nah. Bad things happen. Yep. Um, other highlights of the trip involved a four pound cheeseburger. Yeah, you're a bitch. Yeah, whatever. You're a bitch. Because I didn't eat the eight pound. You got one. the half half a burger. Half of a four pound burger. Yeah, you got... I ate more than two other you people ate, in my family. You ate a quarter of the actual. Okay, the burger. burger was literally almost as big as your head. Yeah, well, you should have got two of my heads. No, I was already like. I just want to see what the fuck the eight pound looked like. That's all I care about. I wanted to go for it. We got there, and my son's like, I don't want a cheeseburger. What? Like, we went there just for that, because they got, like, signs up and everything, like, eight-pound cheeseburger. We get there, it's like, I don't want a cheeseburger. Okay. So, he got chicken tenders, and the rest of us had to share. So, I ate half Jesus. the damn thing. It was a four-pound giant burger. I would have left him there, but like, no, you can sit here until you eat the fucking cheeseburger. He didn't like all the egg and the ham and stuff. Oh, was on. Jesus he only Christ. likes ketchup on his cheeseburger. He's picky. That's all good. We ate the big burger, and it was fun, and I'll try to remember to put a picture on Instagram. It was a huge burger, I'm not going to lie. To steal from my wife. I think she took a picture of it. She did. Um, let's see, other highlights. I played a lot of games, good on that later. You got lost? Yeah, we did. We found this, um, we went, we were trying to find the waterfront in uh, Newport, which is another city close to that area, and I went across the bridge, went to the wrong part of town. I'm did like, you, Were you walking or driving? Driving. Okay. For the record, like when I'm driving, someone else is supposed to be the navigator. Just saying. That's very true. So, um, but I, I kind of followed my gut. I'm like, I'm gonna go this way, and I kind of discovered this weird little carny town next to the aquarium. It's really like, weird. It's bizarre. Like everything's like really brightly painted, and um, it's like if a whole town of carnies like made a little village. They have one of those where I was at. 
Yeah? Yeah. That's I cool. didn't get to go to it. Oh, that's but, too bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what other big highlights of the trip. A lot of time just vegging out, which was nice. awesome. That's awesome. That's really it. So, oh, one thing. Um, not quite worthy of its own tech talk, but my um, thermostat emailed me while we were gone. I think our furnace might be broken. What? Said uh, my thermostat app emailed me. And said we noticed that your um, your furnace is not is like well below five degrees below what it's set at. We think it's either not working or you might have a door or window open. So of course I was freaked out of the door or window. Yeah, up, but we were pretty sure that we didn't. And when we got home. There was no door or window open. So it's been struggling all week to get up to the temperature that it's set for. And right now it's still under, like it, it's 69 degrees outside and inside my house is 67. Weird. With, with the heat cycle on. What the fuck? So I think my furnace is probably broken. But Shit. It, but it was kind of cool to have my app notify me of that. Yeah, that's cool to know that that's going to be expensive as fuck to fix. Yeah, we'll get to that later. But um, I just thought that was kind of neat. That's pretty cool that your app notified you though. That's cool. Yeah. So, so, what what about your vacation? Well, I got on a big metal plane. Yeah. Or I meant to say metal bird, but... And then spoilers, flew... Spoilers, it was a plane. Uh, spoilers, it was a fucking plane. Flew all the way to uh, Florida. Wow. So, that's a long flight. That is a long flight. We woke up at 4 a.m. That's literally our time. from one corner of America to the other corner. Opposite corner, mm-hmm. yep. And uh, so... And we were down at the bottom of Florida, so literally the opposite corner. And... Uh, so that was like a five-hour flight, one time stop, and then a three-hour. So which eight hours for the first. First. Uh, how much of a layover? Like a two-hour layover. Oof, ten hours of travel. Yeah, it's like ten hours of travel time, um, and of course, then you have like time jumps and shit like that. Um, but we stayed on um, our home time, so like we never like let our bodies adjust to the time local time. Interesting. I didn't so, know you did that. Yeah, so, like, when everybody else is going to bed at 10, my wife and I would stay up till like, midnight, which would be, like, 9 o'clock here. It's usually when we start to get, like, ready for bed and stuff like that. And then we'd take our showers around, like, midnight, and then we'd be in bed at, like, 1 o'clock. So, then we'd wake up at, like, 10 o'clock in the morning, which would be, like, 7 o'clock here. That's cool. Usually my son wakes up between 6 and 7, so mm-hmm. um, between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning is when we were waking up, um, which... Is has its pluses and minuses. I don't think I'll do it again if he's when he's older. Um, we only did it just so we didn't screw up his sleep schedule. Okay. And it makes it really shitty because you lose out like on a good chunk of the day by doing that because you're already waking up at nine. Then you have to feed your son, and then he takes a nap pretty much like within an hour or two. So then you're like around noon to one o'clock in the afternoon before you can leave the house. Yeah. That's so. Kinda- it kind of it kind of just like destroys your vacation day, mm. but it you know for him it was worth it this time. So um, we did that uh, while we were in Florida. We did an aquarium, which uh, was really cool. We did that like the second day we were there, and uh, the place we where we stayed is actually a family member's house, and they have a pool. So like the first day we were there, we just kind of like went and got some beers, got these, and hung around the pool. And just kind of drank and swam and just kind of tried to get used to the warm temperatures because it was like minimum of 80. Wow. So just trying to get acclimated acclimated to that in the humidity. Um, the next day we went to an aquarium where we saw like sharks and fish and alligators um, and a bunch of other like sea life. And my son loved it. He was like, fishy. See? 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 I was like, here's my fucking sea. I can see everything too. And, uh, he, uh, he had a lot of fun there in doing that. So cool. we did that. I'm and, sure they were brightly colored and. Oh yeah. Just all tropical fish, sharks and stuff. He was loving the sharks cause they could swim right down past you and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so that was really cool. Um, of course we spent a couple of days on the beach. So I've also been up since midnight our time. So, um, that'll be the end of this story. <laughs> yeah, this episode might be a little shorter than this, normal. Yeah, this episode might be a little bit shorter. We got a lot going on this week. And uh so then we of course went to the uh a couple of them were beaches or we went to two different beaches. We went to one of them twice. Um it's called Lido Beach and it's kind of like there's like a public Lido and then like a residence only like Lido Beach area which is like 
nobody really wants to go to that one because it's all like camp tables and shit like that's all like underneath palm trees so there's not really like good sand to play in okay the public beach is like it's nice but it's not like a crystal white sand it's more like our sand here in the northwest gray yeah it's more like a gray mixed in with some white um and that's usually like a pretty well hidden secret and even during spring break it's usually not full but uh, the so secret's the pub- out now. The public beach was a secret? Yeah, because it's not like the beach people go to this part oh, okay. of Florida for. Okay. So it's like this like beach that like, a lot of people that used to not go to, and it was fucking overran. So the secret's out. Secret's out. But we did get to meet a nice hippie couple that is all about like the Grateful Dead. And we had like this, like, like think of like a tent. Yeah. But... One side zips up like a regular tent, and the other side's open. Okay. And then you can play in it, and it creates shade. So we got we had one of those for my son to play in. Awesome. But we didn't have any beach space. We couldn't find any beach space. Well, these people had a huge canopy they had already set up, and uh, they offered to let us set up our tent underneath their canopy so we could create even more shade for them to play in. So uh, we met a really nice couple there that probably in their probably their 40s or something like that, and they were stoned out of their mind and drunk and just like hey you got your shop your stuff underneath here man and i was like oh, i don't fucking know about this shit but <laughs> all right the canopy seems cool i was like oh fuck me what are we doing so we did that and uh hung out found out that my son is just like his father and his mother he just loves the beach and loves the sand cool so he loves playing in the water and everything which is going to be awesome when he starts to get older mm-hmm. then we went to the uh beach that people actually go to this part of florida for and drove around in the parking lot for over an hour just to find a parking space i'm assuming it's a big parking lot huge well wow. yeah and it said full it was like do not enter full and i was like fuck you guys i drove for, like 30 minutes to get here right so i just drove around the parking lot until finally somebody pulled out Dang. And uh, this one's like all crystal white beach. Uh-huh. Um, other than that, I mean, the sand's way more fluffy. It just feels like little clouds underneath your feet. <laughs> but uh, so it was fun. We spent like all day there. We spent like six and a half hours I'm assuming there. there was tons of people at that one. There was, but we actually got a spot to set up right like within like 20 feet of the water line. So we just set up there and then we spent pretty much the whole day there. We brought beers down. And uh, drink, and then t- he took a nap, and we so we, we all kind of took a nap underneath it for about an hour, and then got up and played again, and ate, and went out for uh, dinner and stuff, which was fun. Um, post beer nap on the beach sounds amazing. Post beer nap on the beach is amazing. I'm trying to think what else we did. Hung out at the pool for a couple of the days, and just kind of tried to relax and stuff. But I will let you know, it's not very relaxing of a vacation when your son's so hyper yeah, and nothing's baby proofed. Yeah. So that makes it really difficult. Quit so, trying to kill yourself, son. So, yeah. And they have like, they have like a doggy door that like, they didn't want to lock because they have cats to come in and out. And I was like, fuck me. Like we had to be like on our toes like all the time. So like the beach and stuff was relaxing. But like, other than that, like we were basically running the whole time. So like, we're just exhausted. Not doing that type of shit again until it gets a little bit older. We'll stay local from now on. <laughs> so, uh, other than that, the very last day, um, he got sick. He came out with like a temperature of like 101. That's pretty high. Yeah. And so this morning at, uh, four o'clock in the morning, their time, one o'clock in the morning, our time, um, uh, we got in a car. So we'd already been up for an hour. So it was midnight when we first woke up here and, uh, started driving to the airport cause it's an hour and a half to the airport from where we were. Wow. And, uh. He just threw up all over himself and all over the car seat on the way to the airport. So we had to, like, stop, change him, and, like, clean the car seat as well as we could, get back in the car, and then finish the rest of the drive. And then we got onto the plane and everything, and, like, after we took off, we are like, on the plane for, like, a good, like, two hours or something. We had, like, a five-and-a-half-hour flight first stint, and then a two-hour flight the rest of the way. And uh, so, like, two hours into it, just threw up all over his mom. She's like, fuck. He had like two loads though. Huh? Huh? He had two loads in him, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Wow. So we got him back asleep and everything. Got him cleaned up. Got mom cleaned up on the plane. Of course, we brought extra clothes and stuff because, you know, we were, we sure prepared, we were for prepared for it. And uh, we were actually more prepared for like him having like a massive like blowout or something. We weren't thinking he was going to throw up. 
We've never seen him throw up before, so that was awesome. If you ever wondered when kids can actually have, like, real human throw up, it's right around the age of, like, 14 months. Awesome. So, um, we got home, though. We got home, like, two hours ago now or something like that. Mm -hmm. You just got home. Yep. So, I'm exhausted. I don't know about you. I'm not as exhausted as you, but... Um, it's but the... I, I did get to watch a cool show on the airplane. What's that? I got to watch The Little Sheldon. Is that the spinoff from... Uh... The Big Bang Theory? Okay. It's fucking funny. Is it? Yeah, it's actually really good. Okay. So, like, actually Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory, like, monologues over a lot of it and stuff. Mm. And it's really good. Okay. So, I watched quite a bit of that. I watched, a lot. I watched like, 10 episodes. Dang. Yeah. They're only, like, 18 minutes a piece. Okay. So, um, yeah. Anyways, that's what I did. This week, uh, you ready to talk some news? Yeah, let's talk about some news. What do you got going on in the news this week, Tim? Well, uh, about a year ago, the future of the Hitman franchise was kind of um, up in the air because uh, Square Enix has decided they didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah, so they like sold it or they like, closed They're- it down. They let uh, IO Interactive um, buy out the Hitman franchise, so the the developer that makes the games like basically owned it, which that's part's cool. Yeah, but you still need a publisher to put it out there. Well, Usually. today or not today, this this week it was announced that um, Warner Brothers will be publishing the huh. Hit- Hitman going forward. I wonder what uh, it'll be going on. Uh, probably the PS4, Xbox One, PC. I know, but like, will it be like a Steam or will it be? Oh, okay. EA well, WB or... doesn't have its own... No, they don't. So that's good. Yeah. And so I'm just happy to see that this, the franchise is going forward. And it's got a new home. That's it, really, as far as that story goes. Gotcha. I'm a little more excited about the next story. I'm pretty excited. I, I was pretty stoked when I saw this email come through. So I think it was part of PAX East, but Astro, announced, Astro Gaming announced they will be making a headset for Nintendo Switch. Yep. And if you go like way back, you'll hear me bitch about the crazy solution that you have to do right now. To have um, online chat. You on... talking about the Splatoon dongle? Yeah, where you got a dongle that connects your phone and your Switch, takes those two signals, puts them together into your headset. And I'm sure there's no lag or distortion or anything. No, not at all. Like I've never actually used one of those headsets, but it sounds terrible. Yeah, it looks terrible too. So Astro like knows their shit. They've been doing this for a while, o- way over a decade. Yeah, and they've had to to work with some kind of crazy hardware situations in the past. They've had preamp mixers and stuff with older consoles, so they're probably pretty good at figuring out solutions for the crazy setup the Switch has. Probably. Um, they haven't announced specs or like an exact date, just later this year is what they said. Okay. But as part of their partnership with Nintendo, they are um, pretty soon going to be putting out some uh, faceplates for their current A40 headsets. Yeah. Got old school uh, Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Bros. 3, and, and Zelda. Legend of Zelda. So, so now Zach wants an A40, I'm yep, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I want an A40 now. I need to figure out how to get one. They look pretty cool. But again, those are for the A40, not this new headset that's yeah. yet, yet to have Well, one. we don't know. The faceplates could still work on the new Switch one also. It's possible. Um, yeah, They could you know, make the chassis of the A40, but yeah. they could all switch, work with the Switch. But hopefully um, they will be working close with Nintendo because Nintendo needs to figure out their online stuff. They need online saves. They need a better matchmaking system. Everything that online with Nintendo pretty much sucks. Pretty much. Like certain games um, work okay. Like um, I actually got uh, into a match pretty easily with uh, what's it called uh, Bayonetta Two. Oh, did you? Yeah, but that's all from that developer. Like, and there's no chat. So. Gotcha. So anyway, um, I'm glad to see that they are reaching out to Astro for that. Why don't you hit, uh, hit the next two? All right, um, so Niantic is going to be uh, settling Pokemon Go Fest lawsuit for $1.58 million. So if you guys don't remember, I can't remember how long ago it was. I think it was last um, summer. Last it, summer, it yeah. Chicago. They, uh, Chicago, yeah, had a Pokemon Go Fest, and it became disastrous when nobody could... I mean, just all the networks all went down. Yeah, so you couldn't catch any of the special couldn't Pokemon. Couldn't catch any of the special Pokemon, and people were dropping left and right. I think the founders actually came on the stage, uh, like, apologized at the event. Like, yeah. It was terrible. People, like, used their yearly vacation to get here, <coughs> spent thousands of dollars in travel and hotels. It was bad. And uh, the company is going to end up paying $1.575 million for attendees' flights, hotel rooms, car rentals, parking fees, 
mileage and tolls, the company will put up a website by May 25th for individuals affected by the problems. It will notify users via email. Uh, to qualify for the settlement, just in case you guys actually did this, you'll have to have checked into the festival in the game and anyone who has expenses that total more than $107 will need to provide receipts. That shouldn't be a problem. Like, I would think not. Most people book with visas, so. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then my last piece of news is, uh, you know Studio Ghibli? Ghibli? I do, uh, yes. Ghibli? Ghibli? How do you say it? I don't know. Ghibli, I think. Okay. Um, they made, like, Princess Mononoke, and I'm trying to think of the other Spirited one. Away. That's the one, yep. Um, Got a freaking tickle in my throat. Magica Valley of the Wind. Um, <coughs> bunch God of stuff. Anyways, uh, the co-founder... Sorry, co-director, uh, co-founder and director, Asayo Takahata, Takahiti? Takahata. Um, <clears throat> has died at the age of 82. Um, he started Ghibli with Oscar-winning animator Hayao... I can't talk, I got tickled my throat. <laughs> so I'll jump in right now and say that if you want to see some of his best work, uh, try to find Graveyard of the Fireflies. Or Spirited Away. That's more the other guy. What? Oh, whatever. Graveyard of the Fireflies. There's yep. a firefly graveyard somewhere. Yeah, the other guy gets more attention. The one that you couldn't pronounce. <coughs> God damn it. <laughs> Alright, you ready to move on to... Uh, I'm ready to move on. To a really brief tech talk? Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk some tech. I never win. So... What do drones, mailmen, and Russians all have, all have in common, Tim? Epic fail. Yep. So, unfortunately, this is not the best audio, so we'll kind of describe it to you as we watch it, because it's hilarious. Um, Russia basically wanted to pilot a mail delivery system using drones, and they developed this $20,000 um, prototype. And what we're going to play for you is about 30 seconds of the maiden launch. Okay, so a bunch of guys standing around a drone on a like a blue tarp. They set it down. The guy backs away. Rotors start spinning. It looks very Russian. I'm just gonna say. There's like yeah, there's like symbols on it. it takes off. You can probably hear it. Flies up straight. Everything looks fine. Everyone's staring in the sky. All like, these old men. And are then like, it Ooh. banks hard right. I mean hard right. Yeah. And Ooh. slams straight Shit. into a building. <laughs> oh, it's fucking destroyed. <laughs> it's little tiny chunks. It, my fa that's my favorite part. This, this name of it just floating away in the wind. The, the logo, the company that made it, just kind of flows away like a like a tumbleweed in a western. Oh my god! <laughs> so maybe we don't need to worry Who about the Russian missiles. Who was at the controls somewhere. of that shit? I don't know, but that's just hilarious to me. Oh my like god. there's all these people standing around watching this, you know, Earth, you know, this this new drone, and it just it, it just fails. It just it fails hard. It like instant, just like hard bank to the left or the right, and just slams. It and just, slams straight into a building. Just it was, it was. Pretty it epic. shatters like on like poof. We got to find some way to make this available to our listeners. Yeah, we can maybe somehow like steal that. And well, when we post it on Facebook or Twitter, there'll be a link to this. That's right? true. Yeah, yeah. So it's definitely worth your thirty seconds to watch this epic fail. And uh, that's our tech talk for the week because I was on vacation and I didn't. So was I. I didn't buy any tech or use. I, I mean my. My thermostat talked to me. We talked about that earlier. That's pretty cool. But, yeah, that's it for Tech Talk, really. All right, sounds good, guys. We'll be right back after this music break with another tasty treat. Kickstarters, which are going to be condensed this week, just as we games we've been playing and game releases. So, tune in. And we are back. Coffee's in hand. Because I'm fucking tired. Yeah, we were going to have another beer. Um, I guess we're saving that for next week. Next week. Did you pull it out of the freezer, by the way? I did. Okay, good. So the yep. last one break. That would have shattered and I would have been in so, we'll so have, much shit. We will, we will have our um, son of malice. Uh, I did. Next week. All right, sounds good. And we also have some more Florida beer, so. Yeah, cool. And, um... 
You ready to kick it? Yeah, let's kick it. All right, this week, guys, we're only doing one Kickstarter, like old school, a piece. So, Tim, why don't you dole them out? Yeah, I see what you did there. Yeah. So, my Kickstarter um, is just launched. Um, it's called Dolmen. I think that's how you pronounce it. I looked it up, and Dolmen is like a particular type of tomb. A tomb? Yeah. Because Dolmen is where the stars bleed. It's a new action RPG whose epic journey takes you to the horror of the unknown. Um, they're sort of calling it a cross between Dead Space, which I love, yeah, and Dark Souls, which I don't. But, wow, that's weird. But it looks really cool. The so demo's available now, Tim. I might have to download that. Um, so let's go ahead and let's play the... Uh, demo? The, yeah, the promo for it. Hello? Hi. You're asleep. No, I'm not. I want to be. I've been visiting you, judging if it would be necessary to communicate. And I'm afraid it is. So, you obviously can't see the, the video we're watching, but the production value seems really high. Really high. In the beginning, everything looked like madness. Many close friends told me, man, you can't make a game that big. But... What are dreams? Domain is bigger than us. That's the difference about this project. We have writers, great artists, and a team that never seems to get tired. It's almost like a metro looking thing. And the funny thing is... Well, you saw Dead Space, right? Not exactly it definitely looks like Dead Space. That. Like yeah. the character has a suit that's somewhat reminiscent We're of We're searching to be part of something really special, you know? For us, it's not just a job. We're not only trying to frighten the players. It's about making an experience really cool that allows art. them to Very believe cool. the fictional like world. These alien we cities look awesome. The world of Dolmen. Dolmen. The plot takes us to the edge of the universe, through an alien world as rarely seen before in video games. A different culture with different habits and philosophies. In the role of the only Earthling capable of solving the mysteries of Raven Prime, the player will unveil its secrets as he travels to save his own humanity. And now, the most special part of the game. This part is you. We need you to believe that Domin can become real and support us to finish it. All of this work has no meaning if you don't want to be our secret weapon. And at this moment, that's exactly what we need. That's why I'm honored to be here, representing my team, representing our dreams, to ask for your support in this project. Join us, and together, let's make Domain a real game. Looks pretty cool. Really well polished so far. Yeah, there's a demo, so you can check it out. So, uh, like I said, they just launched. The team is from Natal, Brazil, and they are asking for 90 grand. They currently have $7,502 with 103, 153 backers. Got 32 <laughs> days to go. Um, Ten dollars gets you the support credits in the game, email, uh, demo, and digital wallpapers. Twenty bucks gets you the game, um, nice. plus all the other things I just mentioned. And there's like uh, digital collectors editions and multiple packs. Moving up to the top level, as we do, there is one left of this. There was two. Um, for two thousand dollars, you get the Dolman Entity. Um, help create an armor set that will be crafted and used by the game character. You help create an armor. And receive receive a real 3D printed version of the armor in 15 centimeters. Um, so mm. that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And the ship is included. So you design an armor, and they will like 3D print it and mail it to you. That's pretty. And cool. And it'll be in the game. Um, plus, you get all the other stuff: digital soundtrack, comic book, art book, T-shirts, posters, um, the character statue. So I guess the your armor will go on the character statue. So that'd be that's pretty, pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so if you have $2,000 and want like a pretty unique item and you're really into this game, um, that's what you need to do. And one person's already backed it. There's only one left. So 
That's kind of cool. I want to meet the person who backed it. I'm guessing it's a family member. I'm assuming so. So what you got for us? What's your kick it? I have Fireball Island 80s board game reignited and restored. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and let them talk about it. But I will say it was fully funded in one hour. That's all I'm going to give you. A That's sneak peek. pretty crazy. Over 30 years in the making, come visit the grand reopening of Fireball Island. You may remember the island's closing in 1986 due to so-called unsafe conditions. That's we bullshit. We managed to rebuild it and make it better than ever. The island is bigger than before, with more action and even more adventure. The main attraction is still here, Volcar, and he's meaner than ever. We've cultivated new landscaping, adding much-needed protection from the elements. You and up to four other participants will spend your day racing around the island. Grab postcards from scenic vistas across the island. Feel the burn on a leisurely jog through Blister Run. Warm yourself to the bone at Skeleton Head Beach. Dare to marvel at the radiant views from Volcar Point. So many breathtaking photo opportunities. Too easy. We thought so too. Along the way, collect valuable treasure. Be quick about it. The longer you stay on the island, the more enraged Volcar becomes. Don't say we didn't warn you. No, really, this is a legally binding disclaimer. Souvenirs mm. will allow you to maneuver around the island or sabotage your opponents. But watch out for cataclysms, which mean even more fireballs are coming. Your adventure ends when you've collected your postcards and made it back to the helipad. Will your fellow adventurers grab more treasure than you, or will they fall prey to Volcar's wrath? What are you waiting for? Pledge now to join in the adventure of Fireball Island, the curse of Volcar. What? Oh, still not adventure enough for you? Fine. Fine. <clears throat> for those looking for a deeper dive into the lost treasures of Fireball Island, sign up for the VIP expansions. Risk ye neck and dare to plunder the wreck of the Crimson Cutlass. Unlock fifth player gameplay and unique player powers you've learned from the last adventurer. Test your stamina against island wildlife in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Bees. Hmm. So pack your bags. Adventure awaits you on Fireball Island. Setting foot on Fireball Island immediately waives all your rights to any lawsuit against Amber Corp by you or any surviving family members. Amber Corp is not responsible for any injuries, such as but not limited to bee stings, viper bites, blisters, burns of any degree, dry throat, sprained anything, broken anything, dismemberment, and or death. Upon leaving Fireball Island, if you should be so lucky, you agree to host, rescue at least one island staff member, effectively freeing them from the curse of Volcar. So? Maybe. So, um... I think it's worth describing, like, the board game setup since you couldn't see the video. Yeah, so there is, like, uh, it's like a 3D. It's like a, I don't know, how the hell would you explain it? It's, it's like a mountain, kind of. Yeah, it's like a mountain. It's got jungle pathways, and then in the center of it is a big demon looking, like, a almost think of, like, a bat head. It spits with its, out these marble fireballs. Yeah, and they travel down through the hidden tunnels on the on the map. Like I said, this is raised... It's not just a flat cardboard piece, um, and it can go down the trails, it can go down the sides, and I'm assuming when it hits you, you're dead. Or at least, like, knocks you something out or happens, something yeah. bad happens to you. So, uh, I'm trying to look up the backing levels. Warning, the following clips of the prototype game board have not been approved by Volcar for viewing. Watch at your own risk, and then... As this game board is still in testing and glossier than Final Intent. What the fuck? It looks really fucking cool. Not yeah, it's, it's a very physical game. It's a very physical game. Um, the pieces look really awesome. You know, the other, like, the little pieces they were talking about, those are obviously cardboard or, you know, cut out, cutouts of some type. Anyways, they're looking for 250000 US dollars. They currently have 27 days to go out of Sunrise, Florida. They currently have 9,028 backers. Wow. At 1,091,407 US dollars. I think it's safe to say they'll be backed. That is backed. Uh, $20 gets you brick and mortar game stores only. This is verified brick and mortar game stores only. Okay, I can't do that. Do you know anyone who is? No, it's too bad. Nope. 
Oh well. Damn. Uh, feel the burn base game sixty dollars. There's a ton of expansions though. Oh yeah, full vol car base game plus expansions. Get the Fireball Island experience, including the base game, the wreck of the Crimson Cutlass, the Last Adventure, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Bees, and all unlock search goals. You can add to your own pledge for an additional copies if you'd like. That is one hundred and thirty dollars, and that is the highest backing level you can get. That currently has 5,899 U.S. backers. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That's our kickers for the week. It's Fireball Island, bitches! And Dolman. Or Dolman? Dolman. Dolman. Do- Dolerman. Dolman. Banana Man. Dolerman. Dol Banana Man. Dol Banana Man. So, Dol Banana Man. Man, man, man. We gotta hurry up because I can tell you're getting delirious from lack of sleep. It's fine. I mean, we're good. We're good. Mm-hmm. Metro is taking off her bikini right now. What are you talking about? That's the game I've been playing. Oh. And she doesn't take off her bikini, but her armor does explode when she dies. So you see Zero Suit Zamus. And there's the Zero Suit ribbon half. And... Zero Suit Zamus is basically her wearing, like... Nothing. Latex, like yeah. her um, spandex. Um, anyway, so I've been playing that. Okay. I brought my 3DS with me, and I've been trying to get back into this game. How's the 3DS experience, buddy? It's alright. Except for when I hit the power button on the bottom on accident. Yeah? That really pisses me off. Yeah, I bet. I did it, like, three times. Did you really? Yeah, when you're holding the new 3DS XL, like, the way I hold it anyway, my pinky and sometimes my ring finger are underneath the unit supporting it, but they naturally go right where they put the power button. And the The power button's underneath the unit? Yes. That's the dumbest thing I've ever fucking heard. It's really bad placement. So the first time you press it, it just stops the game. If you push it again, it turns off the whole system. But I've got I kicked I've got kicked out of the game like three times, losing a lot of progress, and it pisses me off. So yeah, that's that's one thing. That's that was, no fun. No, I I rage quit several times over yeah, that. Yeah, I would too. Um, fortunately, the game has pretty good like um, not only save points but um, checkpoints. Um, so it's a typical Metroid game where you're going through <laughs> getting upgrades that let you go to new areas, but you're What's different about this one is you're fighting a ton of Metroids. There's mm. like 35 in the game, I think. Mm. And they start as like base level, somewhat easy to defeat. And then they kind of evolve like Pokemon. They get more powers and they get a little more complicated to beat. So on this trip, I think I beat like seven or eight. Damn. Out of So yeah, I went from like 1% of beating the game to I think it says I'm now 8%. Nice. So yeah, this is, I don't know if I'm going to finish this game. It's, it's a big it, game. It's a long game. Huh. A big map. But it looks great. Like, the 3D is re- really used um, well. There's one point where I went to this, uh, like, really night tight caverns, and then it opened up into this giant room, looked sort of like a, almost like the wall of a dam, but there was waterfalls cascading over it. It mm-hmm. just looked really cool, and that was just in the background. That's cool. Um, and the 3D effect really works well in this game, and that's something the Switch couldn't do. So, I played quite a bit of that. Um, before we went on vacation, we, me and my daughter finished A Way Out. Mm. And that is a really good game. Uh, it's a Are good, there multiple endings? There's at least two. Okay. Um, Did you but, guys get the good one? I don't know there is one. Okay. Alright. Um, there's speculation that there may be a third ending, but I haven't heard of anyone getting it. Um you and I were going to do a playthrough. I still hope, yeah. I'm still hopeful that will happen. Um, for right now, you can go to the buttonsmashers.com's YouTube channel. Actually, it's be Roger's YouTube channel. But you could find it. Roger is doing oh, a playthrough. Oh, right. Play, yeah. Uh, 40, 40 Splish Splash. Is that his, his channel? Yeah. 40 Splish Splash? Yeah. He's doing a playthrough with his son right now. Nice. So if you want to watch it now, you can see it that way. Sweet. Um, but I do recommend it if you have a PlayStation 4, Xbox One, or PC. Um, really cool. You only need one copy of the game and two people can play it. Um, as long as they're on the same console. Right. Yeah, right. And you both have to have, like, if you have Xbox, you have to have Xbox Live. Yeah. Or in your case, you'd have to have PlayStation Plus. Yep. Which you don't have. Which I don't have. Um, it's really good. Um, there's some kind of choosy parts, but um, I won't get into it too much since you haven't played it. But what I will say is kind of cool is, like, along the way, there'll be, like, a game of darts where you can just, like, stop the quest pretty much and just play some darts. That's cool. Or, like, uh, horseshoes. Nice. Stuff like that. You just kind of fuck around yeah. for a little bit. That's cool. That's kind of neat. Um, also, on our, our our YouTube channel, there's a spoiler-free tiny clip of us doing some rad tricks on motorbikes. So, huh. so check that out if you want. 
on uh, our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash plug and play gamer. Yeah. Um, and so another game I was completed while on vacation was Tesla's versus Lovecraft. Nice. That's on the Switch as well. That's on the Switch. Um, and I had a technical difficulty at the end. So the last stage, you have to set up these four like time things. You collect batteries for them. And then once you do that, um, Lovecraft gets defeated. Well, I did that, and Lovecraft fell over dead, and the level just kept going. What? Yeah, it just kept going. And I'm like, well, shit. But I'm still, like, running around, killing things, racking up perks. Um, I got so many perks. Like, usually in a level, you'll get, like, I don't know, four or five perks. Because it just kept going, I had, like, a screen full of perks. Let me uh, see if I can pull it up really quick. Um, I actually tweeted the developer about it. It's like... Um, I was able to solve it by putting the switch into sleep mode and then bringing it back out, and then I instantly the level like completed. Ended. Mm-hmm. But they, even the developer said it was probably some kind of glitch. So this is how many perks I had. Holy shit! That's like uh, I don't know, fifteen. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> That's insane. And the level was like eight minutes because I just kept going and going. Yeah. And I was like, crap! If I die now, I'll be so pissed. So I beat that. Um, so it turns out it, it just, that's like the first difficulty. There's like normal, then there's something called Aether, and then there's another level past that. You just go through the same levels with like high, harder monsters. Okay. So I could keep playing if I want to. It's fun. It's a like a supernatural twin stick shooter. Um, the perk system is pretty fun. Like you get cool upgrades like bullet bounce or like you teleport faster. Or That's cool. My favorite is the the one that gives you two. Like if you have a shotgun blast it doubles your shotgun blast yeah doubles whatever kind of gun you have so if you get like three of those perks you just start sending out like rays of death in like every Holy direction it's shit. pretty epic so that's a pretty fun game that's available not only on switch but also playstation 4 and i think xbox one as well nice um so check that out it's relatively cheap i want to say 15 or 20 dollars what about you playing the games uh, i played a tiny little bit of zelda but that's about it okay um, i played jumping in the ocean that's a good game it's a fun game um, so you, you collected most of the memories now? I think I got like three left. Okay. So. I need to get back into that at some point. Yeah, me too. So, um, anyways, you want to talk about the game releases that are coming out? Yep. Let's All do right. It. We have Spartan for Switch, Penny Punching Princess, Switch, PS4, The Adventure Pals, PS4, Epic Dumpster, Bear, Dumpster, Fire, Redux, PS4, Get It, Infernium? Yep. PS4, Switch. Island Time VR, PS4, Minute. Can I pause you right there? I want to get this game. Minute? Yeah. It's like old school Legend of Zelda. It's like literally one color, black and white, but you die every 60 seconds. But really? But whatever you collect, you get to save. That's cool. But like, say you have a quest to go get something, like you have to haul ass over there and get it, because if you don't make it in the minute, you're starting over. Jesus. But I'm kind of hoping it comes out on Switch. It hasn't yet. That'd be pretty fun. It's coming out the PS4. Yes. Um, of Mice and Sand Revised, PS4. Sir Eats a Lot, PS4, which would be my son. Metropolis Lux Obscura, Switch, PS4. Dingham Favoron, <laughs> Favoron, Favoron, PS4. Urban Trial Playground, Switch. That sounds like a, uh, like a, uh, parkour game. Maybe, or like a, a BMX racer. Uh, that could be too, yeah. That'd be cool. Johnny Turbo's Arcade Bad Dude Switch. Sling Ming Switch. Super Rocket Shootout Switch. Arcade Archives Ninja Kid Switch. Alter World 3DS. Flight of Light PS4. Impact Winter PS4. The King of Fighters 97 Global Match PS4. Raining Coins PS4. Sumer Switch. October, wait. Octocopter. Octocopter. I was going to say October, that's not. It looks like October. It does. Octocopter, double, or squids, switch, ACA, ACA Neo Geo Samurai Showdown 3, switch, Ignimatis, mm-hmm. Ignimatis 3, The Shadows of Carhala, 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 PS4. Rememoroid. Rememoroid. Nope. Rememoroid. That's got to be a Japanese game. 
Yeah, it's like it's like their memory of your hemorrhoid. PS4. <laughs> That'd be the worst game ever. It probably would be. <laughs> All right. Those are the game releases for this week. Yep. Don't forget to check us out at Facebook.com forward slash plug and play show. Twitter and Instagram at plug and play cast. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash plug and play gamer. And you guys can always find us over at plug and play gamer.com, the bun smashers.com. And until next week, don't forget to. Oh, wait, hold on. I got music. There's some music that needs to be going in here. Don't forget to prime and shine. How do you go to bed? Probably gonna go to bed now. Before you do, don't forget. Do what? Fuck Nazis. I thought it was, I thought it was fuck cheerleaders. I mean, do what you gotta do. And then, then you fuck the Nazis? Yeah, with your fists. Gotcha. <laughs>